welcome to Waffle TV. We're here with the guys from 64 Squares. How are you doing? Very well. Yeah, very well, thanks. Brilliant. Do you want to introduce yourselves quickly and what your sort of role is within the performance? Sure. Uh, my name is uh, Matt, uh, uh, artistic director of the company, and I uh, play one of the characters in the show. Uh, I'm Chris. I am also artistic director of the company, and I directed the show. So tell us a bit about the show itself. Uh, it's a piece of physical theatre uh, based on the writings of Stefan Zweig. Uh, it's set on a cruise liner in the 1930s bound for Buenos Aires and it has a live percussive score. Oh, wow, amazing. Yeah, yeah. And it's also absurdist. Do you want to explain to our viewers what that sort of means? Or Yeah, sure. It's, um, I mean, we just like to tell a good story, but we like to tell it in a different way. So I guess absurd is a sort of a turning normal life upside down. Yeah, sort of skewed reality, because yeah. we've got a, a sort of a way of doing the show where it's a one-man show, but it's performed by three actors and a drummer. So it's uh, the main character's been split into four, and he's trying to work out all these details of his life, um, and it's split up between all the actors. Kind of like if you imagine a beautiful vase that have been dropped, broken, and then stuck back together. You can sort of still see the cracks, but uh, the vase is reformed, but slightly different. Brilliant. So what would you say are the sort of main themes that you approach during the play? Uh, memory, identity, and trauma, I would yeah, say. Yeah, the main ones. Um, it's because uh, the story sort of has a little bit about chess in it, but chess is really isn't the theme of the show. It's kind of yeah. a, a nice sort of metaphorical vehicle for these all these other things. Because yeah. um, as well as the novella that it's based on called the Royal Game, uh, we looked a bit at Stefan Zweig's autobiography. Uh, he was the inspiration partly for the Grand Budapest Hotel, the Wes Anderson film that came out last year, um, mm. and his story's full of a lot pain and loss of identity and all these sort of things that sort of feed into our story as well. Mm. He's a really interesting guy who, who lived through sort of like pre-World War One, World War One, World War Two, having Austria annexed, uh, he sort of had this, he lived during this time that was um, quite incredible. Wow, yeah. yeah. So saw a lot. What do you want your audiences to come out and sort of feel after they've come out of the performance? What do you want them to sort of get out of it? Oh, that they've seen a really good show, have been told an amazing story yeah. and for the 60, 70 minutes forgot about what was going on in their lives. Yeah, and it's a show as well a bit about thinking about the things that you do in your life and kind of if you look back at all your memories about what kind of person that you are and what kind of person that you think of yourself as. Yeah. Um, and if people come out and even have the slightest, slightest sort of inkling of that thought, then I think that's sort of partly what the show's, the show's done its job, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we make theatre that's unashamedly populist in the sense that um, w it's really enjoyable without being dumbed down. Yes, it's exactly. been described as quite filmic and cinematic, the sort of stuff that we do, so mm. it's not really people sitting in a room talking, we do lots of visual stuff, mm. uh, so things will suddenly change and shift from place to place, and it, yeah, it's a bit like watching a movie on stage. And the, uh, the drummer, who scores the whole thing live is uh, really, really good, yeah. which helps. So he, he sort of provides, provides the, the, the soundtrack to the whole thing, and it's created there in front of you. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming and speaking to us, guys. You've been watching Waffle TV, sponsored by Boomers.